Let's take a look at your MT2 LT6 assignment. Don't forget to put your name on your assignment. Can't give you credit if you don't. On question number two, notice 9 to 11 is in lowest terms. If I reduce 81 to 99, do I get 9 to 11? Well, look, if I divide by 9... I get 9 over 11. So yes, this is a proportion because the proportion are two equal ratios. Now, on question number three, it's a little bit harder to tell because these numbers are not in lowest terms and they're decimal. First off, let's get rid of the decimal. Let's move the decimal place over. So I get 84 to 92. Now, that's not in lowest terms, is it? So I'm going to divide by 4 to both of these. 84 divided by 4 is 21. And then 92 divided by 4 is 23. And that is in lowest terms. Well, let's try 88 to 96. I'm going to... Write that as, yeah, move my decimal place over, 96. I divide by 4, and right away I notice a problem. 88 divided by 4 is 22. And 96 divided by 4 is 24. I can reduce that again, but I don't think it's going to matter. So I get 11 to 12. They are not the same. So we're going to say, no, it's not a proportion. Okay, and number four, remember when you solve a proportion, it's just like solving an equation. I want to multiply. I want to get t by itself, so I'm dividing by 0.3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 0.3. So I multiply by 0.3. Here, my point three is reduced. So I get T equals. And then, since I got decimals, I'm just going to multiply them out. I'm going to take 1.7 times point three and divide it by point nine. No, I don't have that open. Let me get my calculator open. So we take 1.7 times 0.3, and we'll divide that by 0.9. And you get about 0.57. And that's our answer. Okay, question number four. I want to get F by itself, so I'm dividing by 8, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. Now, this time, I think I'm actually going to reduce it, because notice 4 goes into 8 two times. 7 times 2 is 14. So I get 14 equals F minus 4. Well, then we'll add 4 to both sides. And we get 18 equals F. And there's your answer. Taking a look at number 6 here. I've got B's on both sides and fractions on both sides. So I'm going to do what I did back in the previous lesson. I'm going to clear my fractions. The common denominator between 9 and 3 is 9. I'm going to multiply both sides by 9. Put those in parentheses to, to remember what I'm doing here. The 9's reduced on the left-hand side, so I'll just write 9B minus 3. Here, 3 goes into 9 three times, so I distribute the 3 in my parentheses. 3 times 5 is 15B plus 15. I always like to move my smaller B now, so I'm going to move the 9, 
minus 9b from both sides. And notice the 9b is reduced, so I get negative 3 on the left. 15 minus 9 is 6b plus 15. Well, then I'm going to minus 15 from both sides. And we get negative 18 equals 6b. Divide by 6. Negative 3 equals b. There's your answer. Okay. Um, number 7. I have an application problem. It says two out of five students in ninth grade have braces. So if I write this, the two would be my braces and the five would be my total. There are 325 students in ninth grade. So 325 goes in my denominator. How many students have braces? So X, so X is going to be the number of students who have braces. And then to solve for x, I'm going to make this a little bit thicker here. Give me a second. So I'm dividing by 325, so I multiply both sides by 325. My 325 is reduced, so I get x equals. Notice three, uh, 5 goes into 325, so I take 325, I divide that by 5, I get 65. So 65 times 2 is 130. Since it's an application problem, write it out as a complete sentence. I'd say 130 students have braces. 130 would be an incorrect answer on a test. Okay, You have to give me my answer in a complete sentence. 